es geht jetzt gleich los mit dem nächsten spannenden Vortrag. Ähm, und zwar äh, geht es um folgendes Thema, und zwar rhetorische Selbstmontage, Sabotage, was eigentlich passiert, wenn wir reden. Äh, dazu wird Pico äh, uns spannende Dinge erzählen. Äh, sie ist FNIT-Sprechtrainerin und macht Workshops auf CCC-Veranstaltungen, ist gleichzeitig auch ähm, Stimmtrainings. Und was ich halt besonders mag, ist die Leitung dieses CCC-Kurs, den wir alle noch aus diesem Every Creature is Welcome-Film von Sandra irgendwie äh, im Hinterkopf haben. Darum ein großes Willkommen und äh, ich sage einfach mal schon mal All Creatures Welcome Applaus, Film. Applaus, Applaus. And, uh, And uh, so proactive applause uh, for Pico. Hallo, mein Name ist Pico und ich uh, erzähle euch etwas über Hello. die rhetorische Selbst. My name is Pico. Und was eigentlich so passiert. And I'll explain a little bit over this rhetorical self sabotage. What happens actually when we're speaking? Mach diesen uh, Talk üblicherweise als Workshop auf so, Chaos Event. So first off, das eigentlich auch auf dem Easter Hack. We're making this talk as a workshop. Uh, part of this chaos events. But unfortunately, um, of course, the Congress isn't happening, and we have to try this workshop um, over the internet, but of course, over the internet doesn't work well. I've put together a little bit of the theory that's going behind the workshop, and then I'll speak a little bit over that, about that. This speech, will have, this speech will have three parts to it, first over the psychology, and then a little bit about the voice, and then lastly we're going to be speaking about how we're actually sabotaging ourselves. Yeah, I think... Uh, speaking primarily about female people speaking, because that's the focus of our workshops. So we're diving in right now over the psychology um, and all organizational measures you have implemented to secure your data for. So there's yeah, three really important attributes is how loud we are, how loud we're speaking, the tone. So if, in, if I'm a little bit higher speaking or not, or a little bit lower speaking, if you're having a really sharp voice or a really soft voice. And yeah. exactly this is like contradicting the three areas that cares about this platform um, how we're building our voice that's going to be supporting um, the what we're trying to say and exactly so we're talking about our, our body like positioning and breathing access to the platform if we are so supporting our chest that's supporting our voice uh, yeah, and it stabilizes um, it's coming and then the, the, the goal is then that we don't need as many muscles students. when we're supporting it through the chest. And I think the, that when you're breathing and there's pressure it's there, it's quite a stabilization. Well, we are and if you look at these three attributes, these Three things, so how um, loud we are, the, how the tone, and then how we're sounding, how this exactly functions here, it goes through breathing, and then how we position, and people who make, uh, who do yoga already probably understand this. There's really two large fields we have to think about when we're breathing. One is the chest breathing. So when we're actually breathing in and our chest widens, and then the second one is when we're breathing and our stomach opens. So when the breathing, the breath comes in, and your chest is doing something, when when you say the stomach breathing, it doesn't mean that the the breath is actually going to the stomach naturally, but it's we're talking about different muscles in the reaction. So the muscle is relaxing 
when we're breathing into the stomach muscle or the stomach breath, as we say. For a lot of people, it's really difficult to distinguish between these two types of breathing. So it's actually more efficient and easier to breathe through the stomach or optimally the one you're doing it through both muscles. You can practice yourself, you try it and then practice, say, okay, take a breath in, take a look, um, is your chest opening up, is your stomach opening up? But let's look together. We're looking into the thorax, I believe, and it's looking into our lungs, it's the gateway. So uh, everything into our, all, all of the air that comes in is coming in um, to our lungs. And of course, breathing is really good. But uh, if your lungs are blocked, then uh, it's not good. And of course, you know. And when there's actually food in the lungs, and then you're going to be coughing. And uh, this coughing reflex is really important to your life because you need to be implementing that to get the food up. And of course, it's for this something uh, that's very important. And then it also plays in a role in how the voice sounds. And it's not just um, people, uh, humans that do it, but of course there are other animals, so birds will be having different tones, but they do it in a different way. Here we are looking at a different picture that comes up. You see a, a interstitial space here, and you see the, the where it's dark, and there, there you're looking into the, the lungs. And there are um, two flaps, basically. Um, it's something called the, the voice slip. And it, it's positioned there like this, like my hands. When I breathe in, and you see like uh, it is in the picture that is open. When I speak, or when I breathe in, um, then it will uh, actually close, there's a muscle system that will be opening and closing this gateway. I find this particular picture really interesting and pretty because between this opening you see actually a gateway to the lungs and you see someone that's um, intubated. These two flaps that we see, they have inside of them a muscle. They either are going to be relaxed or they will be tensed. And this will influence the tone that you're speaking with and um, how your voice sounds. You can either see it from the front or from the back. And what you see on the picture here, you see how it's um, swinging. The, the lungs have a pressure and then it's going to be pressed together. And then the pressure from under is always going to be increased. And then it's going to um, spring open the gateway. And then the pressure is going to then decrease. And then it'll come um, back together. You also see off the picture that it's um, there's different pieces. So in the red pieces are the muscles that's controlling the contraction and release. It's not a one or a zero situation. It's either together or not. But of course, you see in the picture how it's changing, how exactly they are moving together and apart. You see, you see some um, flexibility in the other layer, in the orange. That is 
Dann blicken wir weiter. It's uh, going to be a um, mucus that is then covering the muscle. Stimmlippen bis zu den Mundlippen. Und im Ansatz. So next we're coming um, to the lips of the mouth. Zu einer Resonanz oder einer anderen Dämpfung. And we are seeing a change of shape will influence a change of resonance. Or if you're damping the sound or not, and it's, it's coming from the front to the back, and you're changing between resonance and the, the pressure, this changing back and forth between the two is going to be changing the sound that comes up. And in the brain, is, uh, we interpret this as how loud someone is, speak is speaking getan ist, sondern das ist tatsächlich noch mal eine Interpretation unseres Gehirns. Und, um, And it's not if it's actually done, but it's actually the interpretation that the brain does. For instance, by A und O, you can really see that the form of the lips change. Oder eben die Öffnung klein beim O. And how open it is by A compared to O, was small by O. And of course, with this change of shape, you can then hear it. Und zwar ist das, das And now we're looking at a special um, special conditions for physiology. The first one, when we talk about whispering, and that's when it's held open. The air is going through it, and there's a little bit of um, rustling. And then, although it's rustling, you can still hear it. When they're pressed together, on the other hand, the, there's really pressure between, and there's a lot of pressure, and then you hear it like, eh, like it's, you can hear the pressure. And of course, um, in the special case of coughing, it's when these um, pieces are really pressed together, and the pressure in the lungs is so strong, that um, it's really brutally forced through. And that means that the coughing actually is forced through. And then we're um, switching to the second case of um, the uh, health of the voice. And so I would like to uh, add something uh, about uh, uh, protecting against uh, hoarseness. So we have uh, talked about uh, uh, the mucus uh, that uh, protects uh, the voice cord, the vocal cords, and uh, the, uh, the vo vocal cords are extremely uh, uh, resilient, and uh, you can uh, overexert them, and so you get you get uh, like. A, a, bad feeling in them, and uh, uh, the sound actually changes. So if the vocal cords uh, are uh, supplied with more blood, uh, very small changes make uh, a, a big difference in how uh, the sound is produced. That is, uh, so that's why it's really helpful uh, if you avoid getting hurt. Because it's really hard to compensate once uh, you have had that, um, and if if it happens a lot, uh, the mucus actually reduces and uh, it can become a permanent condition. And uh, here are five ways in which you uh, can help that. So to avoid. Uh, and and improve your own condition. So you can hear the difference uh, between older and younger people in their voices. Um, that's not only because the voices grow, the the uh, the larynx grows, and the voice gets lower. It is also the actual voice, uh, the actual sound of the voice. There are 
there, there are people uh, that manage to, to keep uh, so well that uh, they sound basically the same uh, with 70 as they sounded with 20. And uh, it's easy to, to, to make it worse, but really hard uh, to keep it up. So uh, regular exercise uh, is a good uh, way. Um, so that's what I mean with uh, the melody of voice. Um, so if uh, your larynx is always in the exact same position and, and you use it in the same way, and if you vary very little, um, we have a lot of... Uh, possibilities to express ourselves with our voices. It's as if you had uh, a, uh, a, a big pack of uh, 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 coloring pens and uh, you only use two of them. And so this is, that is what our voice is for, to be varied. And if you do that, if you uh, vary your voice, uh, it keeps it young. The second thing is resonance. Uh, physically, uh, you can read up on Wikipedia, um, but if you want to feel it, if you just hum to yourself, the deeper the sound you make, you can feel the voice, the resonance of the voice uh, in your chest. And the best is uh, best way to do this uh, is to do uh, to do that with somebody who has a really deep voice and uh, put your hand on their chest to really feel it. And uh, higher resonant frequencies, you can feel um, more in your face, in your nose, and upper airways, and the humming. Um, you can feel the, the, your teeth uh, uh, actually uh, uh, clacking together, like uh, uh, vibrating. And uh, you should uh, put your attention uh, to like feel the existing resonances, not so much create new ones, but like feel where they are by going up and down. And this way, you can uh, feel very directly how this works and, uh, and, and do some exercises by, by, uh, by speaking certain words uh, to feel the resonance. Uh, third one is to speak more softly. And you might might have this noise you're fighting against and you're you're trying to give 150 percent and that is really hard on yourself but also on the listeners if 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 they uh, get uh, a little bit too much all the time uh, they're attend they're, they're, they have a hard time following you because they get tired so variance here is also very helpful. Um, sometimes uh, very softly, then very loud. And uh, starting uh, very uh, strongly and then trading off a little bit. Um, try to uh, produce your consonants very uh, clearly. Um, unclear consonants are uh, the result of speaking um, in a too relaxed way. You can you can try that for yourself. Keep your mouth very loose and no uh, no facial expressions and just talk very softly to yourself. And when you do that, and try to, to do exactly the opposite. And uh, when you do that, you need less voice, especially in German, uh, the consonants 
yeah. uh, play in, a very important role in transporting the meaning of the words. So you can relax your larynx by uh, doing doing uh, more specific consonants, and of course more breaks. Uh, you can relax your voice by extending the pauses within the sentences and I hope you just notice that uh, it's not about listeners stopping to listen but it actually increases attention and you need to have the listener you need to give the listener space so you don't need to produce sound all the time and in the greater context um, I've talked a lot for an hour now I'm going to be silent for a while so if you get hers um, the best thing really is silence do not speak that is uh, the best thing you can do and make, make breaks, take your pauses inside the sentences, between sentences, a short break uh, for a sudden relaxation. And like if you're on a walk, you, you stop and sit down for a couple minutes every once in a while. And if you're hers, don't don't try to try hard to overcome it. That only will make it worse. One important thing here, a really important thing, about uh, implementing this. If you're talking right now in the middle, if you're in the middle of a talk, while you're doing the talk, you don't have to think about this at all. Uh, if you if you're uh, very interested in what you're talking about, this will automatically happen. Uh, trial this. Uh, uh, in, in a smaller environment where you feel safe. Don't don't try this on a big stage. So let's get to stereotypes of female communication. In this, in this part, I, I talk about a very dualistic view of female and women. There, there, there are two poles, and in between there is a huge space um, where people actually are, and people might be anywhere on this spectrum, and uh, there are enough cis women who uh, communicate in a very masculine way, and so there's a lot of ways to move between those two extremes. If I describe stereotypically female communication, and the, the, the topic is uh, rhetorical self-sabotage, I'm already um, I'm, I'm already at the point where, where I'm basically saying uh, women let's do it like uh, like the men if that is the right thing to do for you then that's okay but I find it correct the way I speak then that's okay too Okay, let's get to the stereotypical female translation uh, communication. I want to explain uh, you know you, you know the word dialect, which is a regional way of speaking. And uh, es gibt a gender lect. Uh, the way to speak uh, depending on what your gender is. 
And there's a couple of ways to speak which are not uh, helpful for what we want to transport. The most of it uh, can can be symbolized by the by the image of the small uh, little young uh, girl, very friendly, and is uh, very nice, and uh, it, it it always gets gifted chocolate, and it would never uh, talk up to to grown-ups and uh, uh, she 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 might be uh, a bit funny but she's not going to disagree um, with elders and this works until you're about 25 and after that um, after that you, you you get more and more problems so if you sound like a small girl uh, it's really hard to get out of that situation, especially because you, you feel very weird suddenly trying to speak with a lower voice. And it is a complete habit to speak the way you speak. But, but I can speak completely different. And in which relations do I speak? In which way? So how do I speak to people I want to impress? How do I speak to people I'm afraid of? And how do I speak? Um, I've, I've created so many problems and issues and maybe I want to retreat into a corner and, and not uh, show up. And, and these uh, automatic ways, ingrained ways of speaking don't make it easier to, to handle, to, to retrain yourself. And so it gets really hard. So the melody of speech, uh, especially the pattern of upspeak, if you end the sentence when, when, when your voice gets higher at the end of the sentence, even though you're not asking a question. Uh, there's a nice carpet instead of there's a nice carpet. The first variation is less strong and uh, comes over as insecure. That is not necessarily female. There's uh, very nice examples of uh, George W. Bush, uh, who used that a lot. And uh, you, you really recognize that he's insecure in those moments. And, uh, and really important uh, for, for the small, nice girl is that she doesn't take up any space, uh, also not in terms of time. I... I, I don't want to uh, interrupt you. I just quickly say what I want to say and uh, speak very quickly. And, and uh, by speaking quickly, you might um, more more resistance uh, in, in the people you're speaking to instead of speaking more confidently. And there's another problem uh, that women have to fight with, that women that women uh, get interrupted uh, much more uh, often by men, but also by other women. And to stop that from happening, uh, you can try uh, to speak constantly and not leave any spaces where people could interject. And it's really useful to not show uh, when the sentence is over uh, and use the upspeak to lead over into the next sentence. So it's a very nice uh, carpet, and this is a very nice chair, and the people listening have the feeling that uh, you're not finished uh, talking. And when when your voice, voice goes down, your, your melody goes down, then uh, listeners might think that you're done speaking. Um, 
So many women uh, use use uh, relativisms to to uh, speak what say what they want to say. So instead of stating uh, this is a nice carpet uh, uh, and this is what I want to say, no, saying I think it's a nice carpet. And with with many more words, you basically say the same. And in that case, everybody has to decide for themselves. You you have to be aware of how strongly people present their ideas and opinions and how much they speak like it's the truth. And there's people who know the truth and uh, with all those optional things, is it if if you lead a sentence with I think it could be that uh, maybe uh, that is weakening your own position. Uh, another way, uh, another thing is uh, uh, you you want to say uh, many things and you're you're gesticulating very quickly, or you take the space and. Uh, uh, so one very important, one very useful point uh, are your shoulders and your elbows. So pulling up your shoulders feels bad and your, your muscles will uh, get tired more quickly and your listeners will see the way you're holding up yourself and it will tire them out as well. So if you feel well, your listeners will feel well. So finally, um, this definition, you have to read backwards. The always getting better is defined by not being good. Don't don't be frustrated if it doesn't work well. Don't get angry if uh, a speech, a talk didn't work the way you wanted, or or just uh, a talk. Um, be be happy about the fact that you noticed that something could be improved, and uh, concentrate on uh, the next battle. Uh, think of this uh, think about the first time you sit at a piano when you try the first time it's going to sound awful but then by the fifth time maybe something good comes out of it when you you're looking at a different website or a presentation, you have to realize that they have practiced already a hundred times. It's not going to come out perfect the first time. And it'll always get better, it'll always improve. And sometime, then at one point, you're going to be really satisfied with what happens. Here's my contact information. I'm on Chaos Social or um, other um, social networks. Thank you very much. So, dann kommen wir jetzt zu den Fragen, welche hier ins Pad So, we're getting to the questions uh, that have been added to the pad. Question number one. Uh, so, should we uh, try to avoid coughing? Yes. So, when you're coughing, it's a reflex. And when you really need to cough, you can't avoid it. But there are some people that will... <laughs> and it's not really necessary. So, leave it alone. You shouldn't be coughing twice just because you can't talk. This is a process that will be developed over a long time, so when you're noticing this, you need to recognize it and then avoid it. 
But don't pressure yourself not to cough if it's a health reason. So what happens uh, uh, when you uh, clear your throat with your throat? Well, I present with my hands here what happens, the, rub the rubbing together. This is not good. It's really brutal. It's not good. Or that you're rubbing it together, the, the mucus is actually increasing and it's more than normal. And you can um, have this be not the case if it's uh, to have a, a raspy voice is also not good when they're so rubbing together so strongly then there's more mucus there because um your voice needs it and then you're in a, a vicious circle when it happens now and again and you see it in one situation and it's good um, because you actually want it to happen for example, uh, but in other cases, it's a, a, a vicious circle and you don't want it. Uh, the next question, what, what happens to your throat uh, when, when, when you try to suppress a sneeze? That's an interesting question. I really can't see it, say, unfortunately. By sneezing, the larynx is going to be wide open. But otherwise, I can't say what's happening. How do hormones uh, uh, affect uh, the voice, and can man, can can you uh, change that through training? When we normally speak, when we're not professional singers or um, professional trainers in that area, our voice technique is not really maximized, so we can really train and we can always improve. And it's not, it's, it's not going to be dependent on other things. The hormones do influence it and it also changes during puberty. For, for, for many upper singers, and, all, and it also has an influence in their career. So when you go through these changes, you have to see if you can keep on singing. What's happening um, in your hormones, you would have to ask a voice doctor. Do you have any suggestions how you can uh, train voice melody in a higher age? Yes. It's funny, but what happens with a lot of people is when you speak really sweetly to small kids, then you're going to be speaking more softly, naturally. That's one thing. And then when you're breathing in, there's a lot of things you can influence without um, uh, thinking about it. Especially when I'm angry, uh, one can hear that in my voice. What can I do about it? I have to think about it for a second. So, actually, it's good that our emotions are being heard through our voice. A lot of people will um, seem one emotion when they're lying, or they won't hold their emotions when they're lying. But it doesn't answer the question. When you're angry, Naturally, there's things that you can help bring yourself um, under from the anger. You can check, um, practice yourself, how do you sound when you're not angry, and then you can do exercises. And then remember what you sound like. Fundamentally, 
You can then um, think about a light um, female tone. So, when you lose a lot of weight, uh, the voice changes a lot. What exactly changes? This is the first time I've heard it, but it, it sounds right to me. I think everything. I, I can't say this with absolute certainty. But the, the resonance does change. Genauso wie sich dann die Körperlichkeit verändert, also wie 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 viel man sich bewegen will. How exactly your body is changing and are moving. Also, how your energy is being transmitted uh, transmitted through your muscles is changing. Of course, your breaths are really changing. So everything that's influencing and changing the body is going to be changing your voice as well. So imagine it like like a butterfly. There are so many different levels. When before it actually changes and comes out, uh, thinking about a cramp in your leg, and then you have a breath that comes in. And then all of a sudden you'll have a different uh, way of speaking because of it. What uh, tips uh, about harshness and uh, that can you give for uh, different languages? Oh, that's interesting. A lot of things that I've said about the genderlect are we're talking about a German genderlect. So inside. The German dialect, there's already differences in the way that female speak, uh, speakers are speaking, if they're uh, talking about the melody or how deep it is, and you're comparing it to the, the man and their melody. So, for instance, the melody of a female would be more. When you're talking about foreign languages, there's differences. It's interesting how there's different uh, speaking concepts within different languages. So, for instance, in Italian, the vocal sounds are actually more important. And when they're, they're not enunciating the consonants as strongly. And so this is a difference for Italian. The principles that I've talked about in my lecture are staying the same across all languages. What possibilities uh, do I have as a listener in a talk uh, to somebody who is speaking very softly? I would say there's short-term strategies and then long-term strategies. You want to give the speaker a feeling of security. And uh, hopefully then the person has the courage to change. But, but of course in long term, that's different. Uh, in the short term, you give the person a lot of attention, or you can just say, just simply say, I can't, I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, could you speak up a little more? Um, however, maybe to say directly, you speak to uh, softly. Uh, you can say, I would like to hear what you're saying. How, how do I uh, avoid uh, getting out of breath while speaking? That's interesting. Often, it's not really that... Um, it's not really about really getting out of breath. It's a problem of finding the right words of what you're saying or what you're saying next. So there, it's an example of a lot of breath. That matches perfectly the next question. Uh, just at the beginning 
uh, of a talk, uh, is it possible that excitement are, is, is uh, leading to short breath at the beginning of a talk? Of course, absolutely. And it happens to me, of course, in, in the beginning of a, a lecture. It's not talking about speech the techniques from your body, but it's talking about speech techniques from your brain. And saying what happens when you're really excited. It's a really good idea beforehand to really feel your body. It clings, it really sounds es esoteric, but it's practical. And then you're more relaxed when you feel this. It's not just that it's um, doing well for your results, but it helps you feel better. And then you're practicing making your muscles more relaxed each time. I have the feeling uh, that the dissonance between the visual uh, small uh, girl and uh, the the voice representation uh, makes makes listeners aggressive some sometimes. Uh, and how how how. Also, einerseits kurzfristig. Yes. Sich in dieses kleine Mädchen um, spielen, one hand directly in this und was sind das für Leute die darüber wirklich verärgert sind you have to think about for this girl uh, how far is this going are you really going to irritate people there's dissonance or there's this reaction from people it's it's not meant um, to be mean of course but it's to make a connection and uh, it's it's not maybe it helps to be a little bit more uh, relaxed and um, quiet about it. Uh, it's not a problem of the patriarchy and we don't want to discuss that, of course. The next question is about sexuality. Is that okay if I ask that? How? Uh, why is my voice so different if I just had an orgasm? That is really about uh, relaxing your body completely when we're speaking. By all people who want to speak friendly, you have a little bit of tension and you're talking a little higher than necessary. But in this moment, and you're so uh, confident, the people have already seen me naked, and you're relaxed, it's uh, a very different situation. And you don't have any fear anymore. And it's this fear that we're actually speaking tensely and not so relaxed. When singing, I always get the advice to sing my, with my whole body. Uh, is, can, can we translate that to speaking? And how can I uh, give that a try in my day-to-day -day life? Yes. Yes. Yeah, this is um, by a lot of uh, exercises you can do by speaking and singing. You can say, feel the butterflies that are in your nose, for example. It really helps people. And then a lot of people think, what should I do then with my right side? Or The problem is, when you're telling a, a school kid to do this, what should happen, then the, the person is then feeling too tense, and then they don't have enough confidence anymore. <laughs> can I hear the question again once more? How can I do this uh, in my day-to-day -day life? Right, okay, to keep it in your body and so forth. When it's for you, when you're feeling something resonate, say, okay, this is going through my whole body, then it's actually good. 
when it seems so eh, it doesn't feel right to you, then you can ignore this advice. When you're talking about bringing over your point in speaking, what's helping is making gestures. So make your gestures in the rhythm and the same rhythm as your voice. You can also stand, that's helpful, although sitting down is more comfortable, then you're supporting yourself better when you're standing. When you feel the breath go through completely, that's also helpful. When you're singing, you're also paying attention to the feeling of going through, uh, the breath going through and actually be aware of what uh, your breath is doing. And um, it's really amateur if you're always um, doing the same rhythm. So it's bring your breath in, and then it, takes, it should take a longer time when your breath is leaving. Another thing is about the residents. So the next uh, two questions belong together. Is it uh, is it useful to to uh, to answer very loudly if somebody else is speaking loud, and if in a meeting uh, should I adjust to the volume and the the uh, speech of the other person, so I avoid to be interrupted. So I don't, it, it could come across as not very nice if someone said, don't interrupt me. So it's kind of a, a vicious circle because when there's a lot of pressure or something in the short term, it's one thing. In other situations, it could actually help you. And another time, it could be helpful, for instance, if you did it twice, another person can say, hey, she interrupted you twice, uh, let her speak this time. <laughs> so we should try. This is cliche that she had the idea, the idea, uh, idea and uh, um, then someone's being ignored. And then Josh, for instance, or another person will say, oh, this. Oh, he had a great idea. And then, of course, you need to think about the communication uh, and for help from people. To bring across your voice is a struggle that maybe you win or maybe you really lose it. But there are a thousand little situations. And then you have to think for yourself, what is the best solution for this? Next question. How is there a connection between uh, st speech style and uh, gender identity? Absolutely. This is a little bit how I explained in the third section, how this is um, connected to the idea of gender. I think off, uh, also with the la last uh, Easter hack, we talked about this. It's, of course, the theme of how people read each other, understand each other as female. And um, they dived a little bit deeper um, into the issue of gender. And um, a lot of times it's actually a positive connotation. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, there's only two and a half minutes left. Uh, I very quickly will ask the questions. Um, can, can a woman express uh, Ang anger without being uh, read as hysterical? Yes. You can take a, a, a... You can say, I'm really angry at you. And try to really speak deeply when you say it. What should you uh, not do while singing? <laughs> Don't make gestures while you're with your hands while you're doing it. 
Also es gibt ganz viele Sachen, die beim Singen... Um, We're not doing a singing lesson. So of course, there's lots of things that uh, would be important in a singing lesson. Try to sing like it feels good for you. How can I... Uh, I can, can, can I train my voice to be lower in, in a later age? Always think about it. Calm yourself. Mm. Speak um, calmly. Mm. And do a, a training like that. And then it will probably be not that high. I, I have a very... Uh, almost her voice. How how can how can I improve that? <laughs> so this is exactly what I mean. Uh, you can you can look again at the lecture. So here's the last question. Can I become very uh, very, very very silent to? Uh, my teachers thought that was a good idea to calm people down. Totally. But it's also not a very friendly thing. When the public actually wants to speak themselves, then it's actually um, a good method. But in the situation the public is uh, not guilty of anything, then it's actually, I don't find it so great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of applause. Uh, this was the English translation of rhetorical self-sabotage, what happens when we speak. Your interpreters were Celeste and STB. We hope uh, you had a good time. Uh, hear you on the next talk. Ach so. <lacht>